In this video, we're gonna crack into one of the fundamental dynamics when it comes to improving your social skills, which is whoever has the strongest reality wins. Have you ever been talking to someone who's just really grounded, really confident, you know, they have that strong sense of reality, and suddenly you just start noticing your behavior shifting? Right? Perhaps you have a certain sense of humor and it's just not their sense of humor. And to please them, to adapt to them, you're like, oh, I'm actually going to start uh, hiding my sense of humor. Maybe it's not the right one. Maybe I should take on their sense of humor. Right? Just starting to change your behavior. If they're talking, right? suddenly you're just very quiet. It's like, you talk first, please. Your voice is just very reactive. Right? If they say something like a joke, you're going to be like, <laughs> like, very reactive in your laugh. If you say something, right, it's like, well, I don't really want to take up the space. Maybe my joke's not good enough. It's all filtered through them. Okay, I'm sure you've experienced that. I remember when I was younger, right, for example, high school situations. And even after that, when I first started working on my social skills, I'd be like, you know, this is me. This is my humor. This is how I like to dress. And I would talk to someone or see someone who has that really strong sense of self, and I'd start questioning myself. I'm like, oh, they're not dressed, you know, in the same style as me. Maybe I should... Uh, you know, change the way I dress. Maybe that is the correct way to dress, right? Or if I found even a, you know, album really good music wise, and it wasn't the one that, you know, the most grounded certain person had, right? They'd go and be like, oh, I'm listening to this. I'm like, maybe I should listen to that too. Maybe what I'm listening to isn't the right thing, right? Or I'd even just change my behavior. When a person would just walk into, say, we're a small group, they'd walk immediately. It's like, oh, you take up the space, you take it up, is it okay, right? Or I'd let them talk, whatever they wanted to talk about, the, the topics of the conversation, oh, I would adapt to that. It was anything to please, and suddenly I'd just get really stuck in my head, and I'd just start questioning everything about myself, right? Is this okay, is this right? Is this uh, the, the right thing to say, to joke about, the right, the right, right way to act? And I was extremely reactive, and when you fall into that trap, it is extremely low value, and ultimately, you will just get hold in all these different directions in life. You will have no control. It will be terrible socially. Yeah, did you ever get it where you'd be running a training, say in Los Angeles, and the people would come on the training and say, you know, I feel like the secret here in LA is you have to wear black. And I would hear this almost every single week. Like, you're actually dressed in black right now, funny enough. So they'd see people dress how you're dressed now, and they'd say, do you have to like dress in black here? Mm. And I mean, to be fair, there is something to be said where you realize that maybe to get into a high-end venue, there is like a certain way of dressing and you could kind of adapt your style around that to an extent so that you could be a part of that tribe. I'm not saying that you could never, yeah, there you <laughs> I'm not saying you could never ever do that, but you've got to ask yourself one basic question, which is, are you oriented in yourself? It Like, is your mental movie to where you are the hero of your mental movie? And so as you're moving around, you are sort of just enjoying seeing the world through your eyes, having your own sense of humor and entertaining yourself, making your own judgments of things, or do you find that your orientation, um, it tweaks to where your selective focus goes off of yourself and you become hyper aware of how that other person is reacting and reacting to you. And I felt this for sure. I've been in, um, you know, say that I would go to a seminar with somebody who I've been watching for a long time. You might have been to one of my seminars or one of Julian's seminars or one of our collaborative seminars and you find yourself kind of like staring at me or Julian and you think like, wow, I feel like, I feel like there's some kind of star or something like that and that could be the vibe that we get in our seminars. Well, guess what? When Julian or I go to a seminar of some Somebody who we've been watching, we can feel the exact same way. And that's because as you've been watching somebody a lot, um, you know, say it's through social media and you're listening to them and taking on board their point of view, if you then later meet them in real life, you might find yourself yeah. getting sucked into how they feel. And maybe to some extent you've been, you know, say watching them online and you're imagining like what it would be like if you ever met in real life. Like, you know, if I ever saw them, here's what I'd say. And that's why for me and Julian, whenever we're running a seminar, it's very common. Someone will come up to us and say, hey, yeah, and, and we appreciate this, by the way. We're not trying to give you a hard time about it, especially because, you know, half the people watching this have probably done this. But um, if you've done this, you might remember you you walk up and you say, you know, I just always wanted to say this. And you can feel yourself reacting. That's not a bad thing, but let's be fair. In life, they say you're either a friend or a fan. And so what happens is that when you go into that fan mode, let's say you see somebody who you're very attracted to or somebody who you, who you view as like, you know, having a very, very high social value. Maybe it's somebody who's running a party. You're at this like Super Bowl or mansion and they're the one running the party, whatever it is. If you have that frame of like, the thing I've always wanted to say is this, you've now gone into that fan category, which they can appreciate. But at the same time, they kind of have what's called a banner blindness to that. In other words, for them to kind of cope day to day, they cannot deal with 
um, engaging with every single person that comes to them like that and engaging deeply. And the reason why, by the way, is because they've learned that that person is always going to be a little bit too reactive. And it's sort of an, un it's a comfortable situation in a brief encounter, but it's not a comfortable situation as a friend because they're always reacting. So you can't have a genuine friendship. Um, you know, or if somebody who you're into, you can't have a genuine, uh, you know, attraction based relationship with them. It's just simply not possible to have that, right? It's just, it's just not. So what you want to do instead is you want to have a situation where people are more like your fans. And then from that standpoint, you're able to lead and you're able to get the best out of them. So generally speaking, what you'll find is that people don't want that from you, but it's actually can be very fun when you have that from other people. I, I understand this is paradoxical, but that's just generally what you're gonna find. So understand that human beings, what we do is we get our sense of reality from doing something called social pinging. And social pinging this idea that everywhere that we go, we're trying to get a sense of how other people are reacting. And so in other words, let me show you an example, okay? Let's say that this was a cliff right here, okay? And let's say that I'm like, you know, a prehistoric person. And let's say that I start walking over like this, okay? I'm walking over and I start to walk like this. And then I look at Julian and say that Julian looks a little bit freaked out, okay? He looks like, he's like that. Well, then I'm gonna start to get anxiety and I'm gonna start to think, well, wait a minute, I, should, I probably shouldn't go and do that, right? Let's say that I'm thinking about to eat and you know, a dog has been here and it's left a big piece of chocolate feces. And you know, and I start to bend over and I'm like, you know, we have a nice dog right here, right? So say that dog left us a nice surprise and I were to reach over and let's say that I were to like just scoop up whatever the dog's left, maybe even a nice some little bit of apple juice and chocolate. And you know, I go to put that in my mouth. And then again, you know, Julian and the people around are kind of like, Oh, you know, then I'm like, wait a minute. And they're, they're so sure. They're like, oh, like that. And then I'm like, what, what, you know, like, I'm not, I am not going to do this, but let's be honest. If Julian or I right now wanted to get it where everyone started running away and we were to run in there like, run, like, like you would. And again, I'm not going to do this, but there's prank channels that do this. Yeah. You know, again, we're not going to do this, but you know, prank channels will do it. Like if we're like, ah, you know, and we, and we just start to run, people will start screaming and run, right? So that's this idea of social pinging is that we are looking to other people to get our sense of reality. If you want to meet people that, you know, are the kind of people that are very in demand, the kind of people that have like thousands of people wanting things from them, and then you go there and you're in that fan mode, they've got thousands of people that want things from them, not going to work. Instead, you want to be that one person who wants nothing, who is actually dictating the reality, and then because they're not used to that, they're going to be especially attuned to it because they're so used to always having everyone in their frame of reality that the one single time that you have that better sense of reality than they do you're more firm in it and you're more in that mode and it's almost like your energy is better than theirs like you've cultivated your energy again that's why we call this high vibe communication when you've cultivated your energy to a higher level than theirs and then you're more in your flow and your reality just seems kind of cooler they all of a sudden are like wait a minute I'm cool too. Why don't they care? What's going on? And then, you know, maybe they come to you and they try to get your attention. Maybe what they'll even do is try to kind of start offering you things. Like, you know, maybe they start like, for example, in business, they're like, Hey, you know, let me help your business. And then they expect you to be like, Oh yeah. 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 And if you're like, ah, you know, it's cool. You know, right. And you, you hear, you, you talk a little bit, so it's not too overtly like say no, but not as much as they'd expect or, you know, maybe someone who's very attractive is like, uh -huh. Oh, Hey, and you're like, yeah, yeah, cool. And you're like, Hey, take it easy. Take it easy. Right. And then you keep joking. You know, hands off the merchandise. You keep joking. And they're used to that being the situation. Well, what often happens is that now, um, they double down, triple down, quadruple down, and then human beings go into what's called an investment spiral. An investment spiral is what you don't want to do. So here's what it is. Basically, when somebody else has something that you want or they have a reality that you want to fit into, you start overthinking to get into their reality. And then what happens is because you're overthinking about it, well, here's how it works. The more that you invest in something, the more you value it, and then you double down, triple down, quadruple down. And typically people, um, they fail to allow something to be what's called a sunk cost. So, you know, you might've had it where maybe you're in like a bad relationship, but you keep doubling down to try to fix it. And then you don't want to not fix it because then all that time that you spent trying to fix it would be worthless and you'd realize there was no point and there's no happy ending like what you see in the movies. So you keep trying to fix it, keep trying to fix it until like, you know, like two years later, you're just gutted. It's like gasoline to poison your veins. It's totally toxic. And then you finally just leave and you're just, it's like the worst nightmare when you should have stopped doubling down. Well, again, very cartoonish example, very overt example. A simpler example would be maybe that person who's used to running, the, is, who is used to having the stronger reality, they start trying to get in your reality and they start investing into trying to get in your reality. But if you don't fully respond to that, 
if you're still doing what you're doing, then they invest more. You don't fully respond to that, you're still, you know, you're still doing what you're doing, then they invest more. By the time that they're that invested, you're like, you know what, we're gonna go to an after party. I like you. Mm. You know, and it, like, like, notice how I don't even talk, like almost instinctively, like I'm just like, you know, like, you know what, I like you. And li like literally by the time that I would do that, I'm not even, um, I'm not even uh, following to see if the person wants to come to the after, I'm just like, yeah. Like, like, just assume, assume, right? And then, you know, and then, I mean, at worst, if that wouldn't happen, I'd be like, hey, fight for me, <laughs> fight for me, you know, right? A little bit like that. And then, like, oh my God, what? No, you have to fight for me. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'm fighting for you. Let's go to the after party. So, it's, you know, very, very simple. So, basically, what that is is that when you have that strong frame of reality, that is everything. And it's funny because you got to make a distinction here. Most people believe that it's like, you have this much going for you, and then that other person has that much going for them, and that's all there is. They are completely, utterly blind that is the person who is more in their reality that the other will ping off of. When your reality is, I'm more attractive, I'm higher value, the place that I'm going are cooler, my after party's cooler, everything's cooler, and you feel it. You don't say it like, I'm right as a self-qualifying. In fact, self-qualifying is the greatest indicator that you're not in your reality. But when you simply live it, and we'll go in more detail later and also in high vibe communication, how to do this. But when you live it, and it's through your own owning of your humor, your own owning of your conversations, you having fun with your friends, and you know, having fun with other people, and then them buying into it. So now you're now basically what you're doing is you have congruence, alignment in your thoughts, words, and actions, um, and you have social proof. When you combine that congruence with social proof, you're living your reality, and you're not pinging off of other people subtly to dictate your reality. But you're the one that's putting out the pings, and then other people are getting it off of you. They are now looking to you to dictate that reality, and now all of a sudden things just get better and better and better. They may test it, which Julian can also cover. They may test it, and there's a little bit of like, you know, a little bit of like kind of testing back and forth. But the more that you're grounded in it, the more that you're the person who's higher value, more attractive, the person whose humor other people buy into. You're the person who sets the tone, sets the energy, sets the opinions. Other people are reacting around you. And what you'll find is you are the hero of your own movie, and then they are looking to you as the hero of the movie as well. Yeah. You can think of it too as we really filter everything through three different things, right? One is how certain the person is. So let's just say right now, I'm like, oh, we're, the, the restaurant's that way. Let's just say it isn't, but I'm like really certain people are gonna ping. Okay, how certain is he? Okay, number two, how congruent is he? Alignment, so certainty, congruency. Alignment see? in thoughts, words, and actions. Yeah, it's like, you know, on a physical level, does it make sense? Cause I can be really certain, but you just sense like it's a little off. Like it's over there, it's over there, it's over there, right? Versus it's over there. Right? People will ping, they'll look for that. Any kind of incongruency. And then lastly, it's authority, right? So things like social proof, let's just say there was a group of 10 people here next to me saying, yes, it's over there. Even if you're like, well, I think it's over there, you're gonna be like, there's all so certain, there's the congruency, there's a lot of authority, and you will buy into that. Okay, so those are the three filters that we have. Now, linking it to what you were saying too, right? What people say is, well, you know, this is what the person has, this is what I have, so I'm going to adapt. No, no, no. Okay, withdraw from just looking at the surface or the physical and look at these more invisible, subtle dynamics. Okay, realize that reality, ultimately there are a million different interpretations, a million different meanings. Okay, for example, let's just say you were at a job interview. I remember years ago, I went to a job interview. It was at um, Honda here in Hollywood. And I was, uh, again, very young and I show up and I'm like, oh, you're here for the job. I also remember that the guy said to you, he said, you have the face of an angel, you're gonna sell. Yes, I was, she's like, you would be great. Uh, but I remember arriving there and one of, you could say the interpretations there was, okay, you'd be great, but you are a little young. Okay, so that's one. It's like, well, you're pretty young, right? I was like 21 at the time. It's like, you're young. Uh, you know, most people here have more experience. They're a bit more mature, even with customers, right? It's like, who really wants, you know, oh, here's a little 21-year-old kid to sell the car. That's, you could say, one interpretation of reality. You know, you're young. I don't know about that. You're young equals bad. Now, that's one. Here's another frame. And I was really certain. I'm like, yes, I am young, but you know what that means? I don't have all of the bad or faulty you know, selling car conditioning that someone perhaps a bit older would have. I have no bad habits. I'm a blank slate. Just tell me what you want me to do. Tell me what you want me to say. Tell me the principles and I will execute on it. And there, guess what? Two conflicting, you could say realities. Whoever is the most certain, the other person will adapt to it. And in that particular instance, due to, again, me also working on my social skills and getting this, 
that reality took over and I actually got the job and I was hired. Okay. You could also talk to someone and they're like, oh, I don't know about you. You know, like say you talk to someone who has a lot of money. You might be thinking, I don't have enough money. How am I going to compete? Oh, versus, oh yeah, you know what? I don't have enough money, but doesn't matter. Makes it better. Makes me better. Right. Makes me more carefree. I don't want to be someone's like, oh, just counting my pennies. And if you actually have that really strong frame, this sounds crazy. The person with a lot of money will actually start doubting. I'll themselves. give you a good example. I was with the mother of my kids when we we're about 23, 24. And we were at Nando's Chicken in London, England, and this guy was flirting with her. Hmm. And uh, he's got his little red Nando's hat on, his little red Nando's bib on. And she was flirting with him. And um, I was happy for him. I, I'm, I'm so unthreatened that I'm happy for him that he's getting a little moment to flirt amongst his probably pretty brutal day at Nando's. Hmm. Although, Nando's, if you had to be, have a brutal day somewhere, that'd be a good day to have it. So, um, finally, she says to him, not even knowing what she's saying, you know, she's like, what do you do for work? And he's from Spain. And, and my heart sunk for him because I felt like he was having a cool little moment. I, I, again, I'm not secure of myself. I didn't care. And he, and he looks at her and he goes, working, drinking, living my life. <laughs> and she was like, oh, oh, you know, and I'm like, no. Right? You know, I'm like, where did that come from? Like, it, it can come from anywhere. You just never know. Even the Nando's guy. And, uh, you know, nothing ultimately came into my awareness, but um, I don't know, maybe my kid popped a little Nando's hat on, but anyway, so <laughs> years really later, happened. years later, yeah, years later. But, um, but, I, but I remember I could feel how me being a workaholic running a multi-million dollar business, I look like a loser because what does she really want? To be on the beach. And of course I don't drink too, right? So it's like, I'm all uptight, like, no, I'm not gonna drink. We have to have our high protein meal at Nando's. You can't even ever have a drink. You can't smoke. And I'm just gonna work all the time, right? And like with him, it would be like, working, drinking, <laughs> living my life, enjoying life, right? You know, on the beach. Like, yeah. yeah, maybe I had to work at Nando's for seven hours, but the other eight, Hours, just on the with, the with the banjo, little drinking, ooh, yeah, you know, right? And I look like this total uptight, you know, self-made millionaire at 24. Doesn't matter. I'm an uptight loser compared to that guy at Nando's because he's living his life, and he really did own it. I mean, he did. You could clearly tell, like, he was. This guy wasn't messing around. Like, you know, his life is probably pretty epic outside Nando's. It might even be epic inside Nando's. So you have to understand, like, you can flip the script on these things so quick. Mm. It is insane how fast you can you can switch it. You can actually flip the script on almost everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is, again, if you're a self-loving person, you're grounded, anything will always be naturally, this should naturally happen, by the way, interpreted as to your benefit. And once more, it's like, hey, if someone has more money, Nah, that's not good. It's better to have less. If you have more money, it's better to have more money, right? Someone could be like, oh, you know what? Um, you're a little too tall. It's like you're a little too short. You're a little too short. That's what makes it better. You're too tall. Right? Too skinny. Like too skinny. It's like there's, there's always great, different interpretations. Too skinny. You could say too skinny, right? There's always different interpretations, right? You have a lot of money. That's not what you want. You don't want to be the uptight person. You want to be the young, adventurous person. And literally when you're like too skinny, you'll, you'll actually be like, oh, too, too skinny. What? Yeah. What? Too skinny. He says too skinny. What? What? He said, he said too skinny. What? What? He said too, too skinny. What? Huh? huh? You'll, yeah, you'll see that a lot. Yeah, yeah the more and outrageous, the better. You is. might even feel it too, just with different YouTube videos, right? You might be watching this one. You're like, yes, this makes sense. And you're like, you know, I, I heard Owen talk about the no drinking. Let's do that. Let's do the healthy stuff. And then you jump to another video and you might see someone on an exotic island traveling, you know, drinking, doing drugs. And they're like, why would you be all help tight and care about your health? Loser. What about living in the right here, right now? And you're like, oh, you're right. Why then are you living? You can't be high. Right? Then you look at this video again. You're like, oh, actually this. And, and that's what I found too, especially when I was younger, just oscillating. Even, again, I, I keep bringing up like clothing style. I remember I'd listen to, say, Nirvana, and there was like the grunge style. I'm like, that's what I want. Like the grunchy, baggy, ripped pants. Yes. Then I'd listen to Eminem, and I'm like, oh, actually, I want to be more on the rapper side. And I'd just be pulled in all these diff different directions. And that's what happens if you don't have that strong control, that strength and dominance over yourself. If you don't know who you are and you're just always looking externally, you're gonna be pulled in these different directions. Even, this is how crazy it gets, in terms of your life calling or your purpose. A big reason people dabble is they're just always looking for the shiny object. Oh, this person, you know, they're doing this. That's what I wanna do. Oh, this person's doing that. That's what I wanna do. This person thinks this. That's what I want. This person thinks this. Versus, no, 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 let's claim my power back. What do I want? and then stay true to that. It's actually setting your own standards. 
Who am I? What do I value? Where am I going? And just getting really, really clear on that to the point where, and it's you can't fake this. Again, you're certain, you're congruent, and there's just a lot of authority behind it. Yeah, okay. and you know, we, were, we made that video. We, you know, I don't know when you're seeing it, but we just shot it in Venice Beach. And we talked about how people get caught up in their looks, they get caught up in their money. Mm -hmm. And maybe they see a coach who's saying like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm amazing. I got this car. I got a diamond watch. I got this boat. I'm rich, I'm jacked, you know, and you see that. And if you actually are impacted by that, all that means is that you're a sucker for their frame. Yep. That's all that it is. So understand that frame control, again, if you can say, we're not do, gonna do it, because the internet's less fun, but no kiss, we really wouldn't do it. Um, literally, tsunami, and people be like, ah! Even though there's, like, there's no ocean near here at all. It's all the way in Santa Monica and Venice, and we're you know, a lot closer to Hollywood right now. Um, the fact that people react around that, people are reacting around frames. Again, if you're truly great socially, you should be able to be that Nando's person and be like, working, drinking, living my life and have that with such firm eye contact and so grounded and loving it that other people fall into that frame. And really what it is, is most of society, when you see these ads, you know, it could be in GQ magazine, it's like, you know, someone like the nice watch, it's like, like that. And then what you'll do is you'll see people online literally posing with their watch like this and they're getting dopamine from that. That's what they're, they're like, I don't know how to get dopamine just being me. So I'm gonna get dopamine doing like, mm. like that or car like, like this, which look, is amazing. And if that motivates you to go get money, which could help your life for many other far more important and significant reasons to take, to take courses, to you know, take care of your children, to have learning opportunities, to get organic food, to take Easter nerves, whatever it is you wanna do to travel, right? Money's important, go get it. If that motivates you to go get money, go get it. That's what we're always saying. But at the same, you know, it motivates you to get healthy or a six pack as whatever it is. But do understand that like, that's great that motivates you, but if you want to be honest about what works socially, it is that whoever has the strongest reality wins. Yeah, let me give a couple more examples here, right? So say you take a healthy lifestyle, okay? Especially when it comes to socializing, say you're going out to a bar or something, a lot of people are like, well, what if I don't have a drink in my hand? You know, that's gonna stand out. What are people gonna think? That is a classic example of you <gasps> being a sucker and just getting sucked into other people's frames or even the environment's frames versus, yeah, I'm not drinking. And it, even if someone's like, oh, where's your drink? Not drinking. And you're just very certain, they're actually gonna start doubting themselves and be like, maybe I shouldn't be drinking too, right? So that's one example there. It's like whatever you have going for you, own it. Even if say you're out of shape and someone's like, oh, you're a little out of shape. You're like, that's what makes it better, right? <laughs> Done. Just, just something like that's what makes it better. How about moves? You know? Oh, you got moves. Yeah, it gets me more in touch with my feminine side. Mm -hmm. Oh, your, your clothes. It's like that's the scent shaved, of a real person. Yeah, shaved chest. Yeah, it's like the taco meat. It's like just... Yeah, no, no, non-shaved chest, <laughs> the, the taco meat. meat. Shaved chest is my mom shaves my chest. Right? So just things like that. It's like, oh. Well, it's like... And again, this is also... This will naturally happen. Like two people come together. You have different frames, different beliefs, different value systems, right? And there is that period where... You know, things are going to start like, okay, where where's the dominant frame here? What are we going to believe? What's the, the main frame? And then ultimately you adapt there, okay? And there's going to be a mix. Don't get all paranoid here. It's like, I must always have it. Like, it's fine, right? If you do still ping, right? Connecting is you connecting, the other person connecting too. But ultimately, overall, nothing should shake you off of your sense of self and what you value. And that there is extremely, extremely attractive. So... Again, don't get sucked into all the external. Uh, a classic saying from yours truly too is your reality, your rules, right? Reality ultimately is up for grabs. If you think it's this and you're very congruent with it, people will adapt and buy into that frame as well. You know, and people will hear about this and they'll say, oh, and Julian are saying, you should just let yourself fall apart and that that's actually good. But understand that's not what we're saying. Use, you know, if somebody else sets a frame and you know, say that you see some magazine image of somebody, you know, in a Beverly Hills mansion with the watch and the car and, and a six pack ads and that motivates you to go get that great, go do that, that's up to you. But do understand that if we're being honest, if you were to go out for the next 10 or 20 years and you wanna see what's getting the results, the stronger reality is what gets results. And if you cannot get results without being sucked into somebody else's frame, you are an amateur. It is purely amateur hour. You should honestly, like, 
you know, again, internet's just so much less fun these days. But like, if it was a bit more fun, I would love to just dress up in a giant fat suit and just run around and just like in one of those ones that looks real, and, you know, and I'd be like five, six hundred pounds, and you could spray me down with like a skunk or something, and just let me loose, and I will have a ball, no problem at all. Again, it's amateur hour. People don't get it, and then they distort the advice to, to saying, oh, oh, and Julian said that you know you should just be some schlep. Even though we run a self-development company where we separately teach how to make money, separately teach how to do marketing, separately teach how to have strong inner fundamentals, and separately teach how to do almost anything, the only thing that we're saying is if you're not going to be in this amateur hour mode and you want to understand social dynamics, realize the people who run things are the people with the strongest frame. And that is what we're going to leave you with here today. Whoever has the strongest reality wins. Peace.